but we can pretty much do everything from a chair. We will maybe stand up and then use the chair to lean on as well. So the chair can also um, be valuable for that. And again, I'm gonna say this one more time. I don't want your chair on a slippery floor. That becomes dangerous, particularly if we stand up. So your chair needs to be on a non-slip surface. And really a chair without arms is so much better, or if you have a sofa and you've got some room, because the arms of a chair could get in the way. I am using a folding chair, but a super heavy duty folding chair. All right, I think we'll get started. So welcome to Yoga from the Chair. This is designed to be able to be done in an office space or any other small space. So if you have limited space or limited mobility, this is a great practice for you. My name is Andrea Trank. I'm a full-time yoga teacher and health coach, former school teacher, um, both at the high school and college level. And I am affiliated with Take Lessons and I love the group of people there and I hope you reach out to me. So we will start by sitting up nice and tall and um, I'll show you what I look like from the side. So sitting up tall means really elevating. So not doing this necessarily, which is the way a lot of us end up sitting in chairs. Sometimes it helps to actually sit toward the edge of a chair if, um, in order to sit up properly. The other thing you might be aware of is if your feet are just hanging in space, it would be nice to have your feet on something, whether it's even books or blocks, so that you can have your feet resting on something. All right, so we'll start with a breathing practice. So put your one hand inside the other hand, cupped facing up, and it doesn't really matter which hand is inside the other hand. If you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and close your eyes. Closing your eyes does allow you to visualize and bring your attention internally. If you're not in a place where you can close your eyes, see if you can at least soft gaze, just kind of stare into space. And as you inhale, I want you to imagine that you have a bonfire in your belly and you're just adding oxygen to that bonfire and you're spreading out your belly and widening the base of your, your spine and your pelvis area, that's the inhale. And on the exhale, the fire is climbing up and warming up through your body and then releasing. If you can do this both through your nose, that would be great. If you can't, at least try to inhale through your nose and then open up your mouth by exhaling. So I'm just sort of expanding my belly. When you deepen your breath, you tend to relax your nervous system. When we breathe shallowly, our nervous system finds its way into more of a fight light. But when we deeply breathe, both in and out, we are moving ourselves into a rest and digest nervous system response, which is known as parasympathetic. So inhale, opening, exhale, releasing. Inhale, stoking that fires of the bonfire. Exhale, drawing that heat up through your body and out. A few more times. Inhale and exhale. And inhale and exhale. So go ahead and open your eyes if you've closed them and place your hands on your kneecaps and you can straighten your arms and then we'll, we'll lean forward. So we're pulling ourselves a little forward, chin up, chest out. And then on the exhale, you're kind of rounding in and drawing your shoulders up towards your ears. Inhaling, really trying to engage your whole spine 
exhaling. This should feel like a little bit of work. I'm gonna show you from the side again. Inhaling, elevating, lengthening, exhaling, shoulders to the ears, rounding, carving out my tummy. Inhaling and exhaling. So you can actually get a lot of work done without leaving your chair. So we're gonna let our spine move a little bit in circles now. So I am still leaning on my knees to kind of help me circle around. So you should feel this kind of all over. Just let your spine move. And if you're in a room without a lot of people there, you can kind of get creative. Let's go the other direction. Now I want you to go side to side. Just first start with your spine. So your spine is going one side, the other side, one side, the other side. Now I want you to let your arms go in it. So this is very free form. If you're a dancey type, you're doing it more dancey. If you're not a dancey type, you're, you might be a little stiffer, but that's okay. This is just an, trying to get everything to move a little bit, loosen up, release stress. <sighs> Anytime you need to sigh, that's a great stress reliever too. All right. Come back to the center, flow your hands up to the sky with an inhale, you might look up. And then on an exhale, make fists and draw them back. Flow your hands up to the sky on an inhale, make fists, draw them back. Inhaling, flow, exhaling, tuck everything in with fists. And last time like this, Good, you might need to shake things out, shake out your fists, shake out everything. So we're gonna do that whole thing again, but this time we're gonna twist. So inhale up, exhale, twist. And twist from the waist up through the head. Inhale up, exhale, twist to the other side. If your eyes are open, you'll twist Further, if you want it to be gentler, close those eyes. We tend to twist our head more if our eyes are open. And one more time to each side. And notice how you feel. How are you feeling? You're feeling a little more mobility in your upper body? All right. So now we're going to actually do a full forward fold from a seated position. Now, if you don't wanna be seated for this and wanna to stand to do a forward fold, you're welcome to if you have enough space. But I do wanna show you that you can do all of this from a chair. So once again, let's let our arms flow freely up and then just allow for everything to drop down. Now I'm lengthening my low spine first and then I'm just letting everything collapse. I want to show you this from the side again, because I want you to see that on my way down, I'm not rounding my low spine. You see, I'm lengthening it, lengthening, lengthening. And then when I get down, I'm just softening my upper spine. So inhale up. Now, if you have a tendency to get dizzy, don't come up and down so much. You might just stay down here and just see if you can soften your low spine, soften everything and breathe. So I'm gonna turn back to face you again. This time I'm gonna widen my, my seat a little bit. So my, now my knees are a little more than hip distance apart. So the next time I do go down, I'm gonna actually be able to twist a little bit down here. So I'm coming back down, folding over, and you are welcome to do this standing up again. And then I'm gonna draw my hands over to my right side and feel a little bit of a side stretch, almost like you're a crescent moon on the side here, breathing. 
And let's come back to the middle. And then we can draw our hand over to the left side. And notice you should feel the stretch in your right side body, the opposite side, coming back to the middle. Now come halfway up for a minute so you don't get dizzy coming all the way up. So I'm leaning my elbows on my thighs and I'm lengthening my spine, getting my head above the heart for a minute. So I don't want to get dizzy. And then making my way up and seeing how you feel. So that's, you know, there are a lot of forward folds you can do with a chair. I do want to show you a forward, a safe forward fold you can do hanging on the back of a chair, which is more like doing a downward dog with a chair. So what I'm going to do is have my chair a little bit over to the side now. And again, you got to push down on the top of the chair so that it does not move. I'm going to walk myself away, walk myself away, walk myself away, and then just hang down here. So again, I'm lengthening my spine. And some people could even drop their heads lower, but you should feel a beautiful length in the spine. And then coming back up. Now, if you wanted to, and you want to go deeper, you could do it with the lower side of the chair. And then again, do, this is sort of like a downward dog on a chair, lengthening your spine, feeling that stretch, and then safely coming up. So, how are you all feeling? You should feel a little looser in your upper body. So the chair, again, can be used in so many different ways. So if you have enough room behind your chair, you can do your lunge series leaning on the chair. So I'm not going to go deeply into the lunge at first. I'm going to kind of move my knee up and down a few times. And the reason you do that is if you go right into a deep stretch from a very contracted position, <laughs> you could end up injuring yourself. So instead, what we're doing is we're kind of contracting and releasing. So it's almost like squeezing and letting go, squeezing and letting go. And every time you squeeze, squeeze, you're squeezing out any of the soreness and the inflammation and the stiffness. And when you let go, all that freshly oxygenated blood is coming in. And you could now add an arm up, arm down. One arm up, one arm down. And last time. And then let's go ahead and switch to the other side. So in between, you might want to shake things out because maybe you you activated some muscles you haven't activated all day sitting in that chair or working. So go ahead and take your other leg back. And again, let's not go directly into our deepest version of the lunge. Let's just bend and straighten a few times. Let's ease into this lunge giving our body permission to get out of its contraction. Stress gets us into a contracted state and also being sedentary does. And also just not, you know, not moving every day. We've got to move more. We're all stuck at home. We're all stuck in our offices. Go ahead and add the arm going up and down. Ah. Make sure you're breathing, allowing your body to move smoothly and a little more freely. Okay, so how is that feeling? You feeling a little looser? So 
If you're a person who did not want to get out of the chair to do the lunge, I do want to show you that if you have a chair like this, you could do the lunge series actually in the chair, but you'd have to sit sideways. So I do want to just demonstrate that so you can see that. So literally I'd be sitting with my one leg bent, your inside leg, and your outside leg stretched up. And this is a pretty big stretch. In fact, I think this is a bigger stretch than what we were doing when we were standing up. So you might want to try it, especially now that we have warmed up those muscles. If you have the kind of chair that would work, this would not work obviously on a sofa. And it has to be a chair that doesn't have arms sticking out, but it's, it's not a bad stretch. It feels really good. All right, let's do the other side. So again, you're just turning yourself on your chair. I'm taking one leg behind me and I have to move some props out of the way. And then the bent leg is in front of me and I've got my toes tucked in. You really do need to tuck in your back toes. You would not want to lay on the top of your foot flat. And this is a pretty big stretch for the legs and for the hips and for the lower back area. Ah, so don't forget to breathe. So again, just imagine you don't have time or you're just you know, stuck working all day. You can take a break and do these kind of things. Just make sure you're adding the breathing in and we'll definitely add a relaxation at the end. So here's a way of doing a pigeon pose from a chair. And this is pretty intense. So if it's too intense for you to take your foot up and put it on the um, thigh, you could cross it down lower. But if it's okay to do it like this, so I've got my ankle on my thigh, and this is a big, big stretch on this leg. So just feel the stretch. You could even lean forward. Oh, that intensifies it. <laughs> and come on back. Lean forward. And again, we don't want to stay in this. We want to, we're doing the contraction and release. And the other thing to remember, whenever you are stretching one muscle, you're contracting the other side, right? Every muscle is in an agonist antagonist group. So we have to be aware to not always stretch one. Like in yoga, we tend to overstretch our hamstrings and that puts our quads in a contracted state or we overstretch our outer side and that um, puts our inner thighs in a weakened state. So you have to make sure you're always focusing on balance. All right, let's go ahead and release that side and let's change sides. Now this one is a little more difficult for me. I have a little bit of an injury on this side. I'm not going to be able to go down as low. So be aware of what's going on in your body. Don't power through this. This is not what yoga is about. We don't power through poses. Yoga is supposed to be healing. And in order for it to be healing, you have to stay present to what it, you're experiencing in your body, in your breath, and in your mind all at once. What is this? What kind of sensations are coming up when you do something like this? They say our hips are like our junk drawers. So sometimes when we're working our hips, it could release some things that you've kind of tucked away in that junk drawer for a long time. Okay, let's go ahead and release that. And let's release the whole thing by doing these circles again. Circling, and you can make them bigger now because we're a little more warmed up. And you can get your whole body into that. Let's go ahead and go the other direction, circling. OK. 
Okay. So we can do some more standing poses with the chair as our helper. So for instance, you can do a twist using the chair. So I'm not gonna mirror you here because it'll get too confusing. I'm putting my left hand on the chair and then I am taking my right foot and putting it up on the chair and I'm opening up over the right leg. So my hand is keeping me from falling, but I'm not staying in that twist yet. Again, this idea of doing a little bit of pumping or pulsing to get your body to release when it's in a contracted state. Again, if I stayed there without this little bit of inching it over. And some of you might want to try doing a little bit of arm work with this. You can open up the arm. I'm keeping my elbow bent to keep my shoulder safe. If you don't have any shoulder issues, you can straighten the arm if that feels good. And then let's go the other direction. Now I definitely bend it when I come from the back because that's when a lot of times you can torque your arm. Nice. Let's go ahead and go to the other side. So to go to the other side, I'm actually going to shift completely to the other side. This time I'm putting my left leg up. My right arm is on there. I'm opening up and closing, opening and closing. And sometimes you will get a little pinching because if you've been sitting a lot, you might be in a slightly contracted space, place in part of your body. So when that happens to me, cause I felt like I twisted a little too far at the beginning, I tend to try to rub those areas out as I'm doing it. Now we can add a little bit of arm to it by gently circling. And you see how my head is following also? And then we can go the opposite direction. And so I'm gonna bend my arm from the back, almost like you're doing a crawl. So imagine you're a swimmer, you're doing the crawl. I guess they don't call it the crawl anymore. It's called freestyle. All right, and how are you feeling? Everybody feeling okay? So we can try to do a balance with the chair, and that's the thing is the chair is so helpful. Again, if you, your chair is nice and stable, you gotta really make sure you push your hand down to make sh keep it stable. And if the chair is not the right height for you to do a balance, but you need some help, then go ahead and go close to a wall. Because I don't want you leaning over because then it's not doing you any good. So let's go ahead and just draw. I'm drawing up my left leg. I'm not mirroring you again. And just hold it there. And then if you want, you can go up and down with your arm. That makes it a little more challenging. Your eyes can follow the arm. Good, and then I'm gonna to go to the other side. Well, first I should just get my leg up and just, so you're engaging some muscles when you do this and then allow your arm to go up and down. All right, release that. So the other, thing you can do with a chair. And for some people, this is, is not going to be within reach. If to stretch the quad a little bit, you would bend your leg back. Now, if, if reaching that is out of the question, don't worry about it. You can, we can get this another way. But if you can reach, getting that quad stretched out is really, really nice. And it's also a great balance here. 
because again, when we're, our front gets so contracted when we're sitting a lot that it's nice to open up the front body and then go ahead and do the other side. Getting that quad nicely stretched out. Breathing. Okay, is everybody okay? And again, if you can't do that, um, another way you could stretch the quad out is you could put your knee on the chair and just kind of lean forward to try to get this front of the body, the quad to stretch, just getting your knee on the chair. And the same thing with the other one. So you're still getting somewhat of a quad stretch here. Good. Okay, let's come back down to our chair. Now, back bends are something that the chair can be very, very helpful in doing. So I'm reaching around, grabbing behind me on the each edge of the chair. And then I'm coming toward the front of my chair a little bit. And I'm just opening up my chest. And then you can collapse it in just to feel the difference. So this is the inhale. Open the chest. Exhale. Inhale. Open, open, open. Don't throw your head back, but you can lift your chin. Exhale. And open, open, open. And you can stay here. Take a couple of breaths here. Feel this beautiful opening of the chest. And release. Everybody feeling okay so far? So we haven't done a lot of side to side. Now, there's a way to do side to side with the chair. I reach and grab under the chair, like there's a little ledge here. So I'm gonna grab under there. I'm gonna draw, and this time I will try to mirror you. You can grab your right arm under, draw your left arm over. Now, this is what I want you to do with your head. I want your head to look at me, your eyes, and then I want your eyes to look down to the right. And then look at me again, and look down to the right. And look at me again, and down, and then release that. That's actually a much safer way to stretch your neck out. Let's go ahead and do the other side. So reaching underneath, go ahead and grab um, under your chair, reach over, Look down, look at me, look down, and look at me. One more time, and release. So let's go ahead and stretch our legs out. Just stretch your legs completely out from the chair, and I'll move back even a little further so you can see how stretched out I am. So really, I'm just totally stretched out. And maybe give your legs a little love, a little rub down. You know, when you're sit seated a lot, and then you try to exercise, sometimes you will go into a little bit of a contraction. So just rub them down, give them some love. Ah. A few more times. All right, so if you want to work your core a little bit from the chair, I actually think this is really hard, um, like harder than doing core work on the ground. So you could take your left leg up like this, cup your hands underneath and then you can lengthen and bring it back in a few times but then we're going to try to do this without our hands so I'm gonna, you might hear some clicking and cracking a lot of clicking and cracking all right so now you're going to try to do this without your hands oh 
this is a lot of work. <laughs> I don't know at this time of day if I want to do it. If you keep on, if you want to do some more, it's a lot of work. We could just stretch and not do the core work if we want to. Let's draw the right knee in and let's stretch it, stretch this leg and collapse a few times. Ah, yeah, this is the end of the day for me. I usually don't teach yoga this late in the day. I'm a morning gal. All right, if I want to try, I guess I have to try the, the core work on this side. So this is not only core work, but it's leg work. Wow. To me, it's amazing that just sitting in a chair, you can activate your muscles so much. Go ahead and rub them down again. Give them some love. Shift around, move around some freely. And then you could actually do both legs if you wanted to. Yeah. Do I have to demonstrate? <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh my God. This is core is like my nemesis. I feel like I'm a strong person until I get to the core. And then I'm like, oh no. So I'm just kind of pumping my legs, hanging on, trying to smile. Okay, I hope you all worked your core harder than I did. <laughs> all right, let's just let it go again and loosen it up. Yeah, I was surprised that, you know, that you could really get a decent workout on a chair with that, with either limited space or limited mobility, you can really, you know, do some things. Ah. Okay, so how's everybody feeling? So I can, I'll show you a few more standing postures you can do. I mean, literally, if you think about it, most of the standing postures can be done leaning on the chair. And um, so I can do a warrior two on the chair. And in fact, I think I'm gonna show you it. I would start off in a wide legged stance, right? So, and then just kind of hanging over the chair. So this is a nice wide legged forward fold, a great relaxing posture. Great for people who don't want to put their head way below their heart because they would get dizzy. This feels a little more supportive. The other neat thing you could do before we move into the warrior series is you could do like this one, the twisting up and down one, which you know you could do on the ground, but again, this one, let's say you're in an office, you don't want to put your hands on the ground you can still move things around and get that exercise. So relax again in the middle, shake your hip, hips side to side. And then if you were going to do a warrior two, you can either do the warrior two sitting on the chair. So this time I'm sitting kind of facing in and I've got one leg forward and the back leg is turned, so I'm like that. And I don't love the way that feels. Let's try it the other way. Again, so I would actually try it more this way. Yeah, so your back is still there. But you know, before we had our toes tucked in the back, and I'm gonna turn facing away from you so you can see this. So remember before we had it like this. This time you're seated like that. So now my toes, are pointed toward the side. And this could be your warrior two here. So this is a warrior two sitting on the chair and you could lean forward like that and move your head up and down and your arm up and down and your eyes. You could lean back like this and get the stretch that way. Or this whole thing could be done with your back of the chair. So you could do it more like this. So now I'm actually using the chair with my hand 
and I'm doing my warrior two. Now remember, a warrior two is an open pose, whereas a warrior one, you're facing forward. So my back foot is more facing that direction. My hips are slightly opened, and I could keep one hand there. Now, if you were going to lean over, you might put your forward hand on it and lean over. Come back to the middle. Now I could put my back hand on it. And back to the middle. But I actually do like the chair with this pose. I really do like warrior two on a chair, which is really nice. So let's try the other side. So you have one leg forward. The other leg is back, but remember we're not, and I'm gonna show you this way so you can see my, my feet. So before we were like this, completely facing, and we were up on our toes a little bit. Now we're kind of sitting a little more sideways. You've got the side of your foot, and your foot is sort of facing off to the side so that you're open here. And then leaning forward, and then you can raise your arm up, eyes go up, arm goes down, eyes go down, arm up, arm down, last time. And then we could do the same thing leaning back. So your eyes and arm could go up, and then you could look down, up, and down up and down okay all those things that we can do on a chair if you have limited space or limited mobility so let's come back and start to cool down a little bit and just see how we're feeling so going back to that deep belly breath imagining that you are got a nice belly bonfire and you're expanding your breath down deep opening up and then as you draw your navel in the fire is gently climbing up all the way and being exhaled so inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling inhaling and exhaling and just sit quietly for a minute and notice how you feel How's your breath feeling? Noticing all the body parts. Do you feel like you have a little more spaciousness in your body? If there are areas that are still contracted, they might just need a little more attention. So I want to walk you through a nice meditation. And it's, you know, when yoga, oh, wait a minute, before we do the meditation, I do want to show you one other cool thing because of meditation. So let's say you're sitting at your desk like all day, all day, all day long. This is how you would release tension. If you, like you don't have time to do a whole yoga practice here, okay, I've got three minutes. This is what you do. You stand up and then you lift one leg up at a time. You just kind of, it's kind of like marching in place. Then I want you to go behind your, your chair, go behind your chair, and I'm going to turn my chair sideways so you can see me. And you're going to go in and out of a a lunge. This is going to release your back and your hip flexors. You're in a chair all day long. 
The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna lean on your chair, lift the back leg, giving it a nice stretch. And then you're gonna curl over to release your back. Now what we did is we did all these preliminary things first before we tried to release our back. Because if we just went ahead and released our back without doing that, that's when you injure yourself. So let's start again doing the other side. Marching in place. So this is what you're going to do when you've been stuck at your chair all day. You're not going to have time to do a, a chair yoga practice. You're not going to have time to get out, but you want to release some tension. Then go ahead and take your other leg back. I have no idea what leg I had forward and which leg I had back. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's this one. This one's back. I hope. No, feels like the same one. <laughs> Just don't forget which leg you had forward and which leg you had back. So you're stretching that out next. So the sequence is march. Stretch the back of the leg out in a lunge. Lift that back leg up in some sort of um, warrior three. And that's getting this muscle to kind of contract and engage. Then draw that leg down and curl yourself down to release your back. So instead of just going into a static stretch, this is the safer way to release tension when you don't have time to do a full yoga practice. So I wanted you to have that as just like a, okay, that's a two minute thing you can do. You could even do it once an hour when you're really, really busy during the day. All right. So I'm gonna ring my beautiful crystal. Well, it's, not, it's my uh, steel bowl. And after that, I'm gonna put you into a meditation, a seated meditation, and then you will be ready to go on with the rest of your day when we come out. So sit comfortably, make sure your feet are on the ground. And some of you might even be actually sitting cross-legged on the ground now. Breathe in deeply and begin to attune with your inner self. Let go of all the thoughts and concerns of your day. You're tuning into your soul that part of you that doesn't get caught up in all of the day. It's the part that's always there, trying to get our attention. So begin to breathe into the center of your heart. You could even place your hand on the heart. And with each in-breath, touch that central most spark within your heart. As you touch the spark of light in your heart, imagine it growing in intensity and size so that with each breath, it fills you full of this loving, light-filled energy. Keep doing this until it fills your whole body and your entire aura to overflowing. Placing your attention on your heart, begin to feel your connection to all of life. And start to notice or contemplate what you are personally grateful for. Whatever comes to mind that you can be grateful for and have gratitude for. Now imagine a world, visualize a world where every be being feels this deep, resonant peace, safety, and well being. 
and in your heart, blessing all of the world that it should know such peace. May all beings be well. May all beings be at peace. So gently open your eyes. Go ahead and gather anything you needed from this yoga practice, drawing your hands to the heart, acknowledging each other, each of us on our own healing journey and now on this collective healing journey. As we all together say, namaste. Be well. Thank you for coming and I hope you enjoyed this.